All right, so we're gonna transition now to our locally grown, brewed, and baked panel. So our uh, first speaker is Jason Perkins from Allagash Brewery. Um, Bart just talked about the 16 counties and commitment that Allagash has made um, to using local grains. Um, when we were thinking about the agenda for the day, we're really trying to follow a little bit of a seed to glass trajectory here. Um, so we've heard from the people who are boots on the ground doing research, and now we're gonna hear from some of the businesses that are using local grains in their products. Jason? All right, I'm gonna take this off and hold it. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Uh, well, I realize we're in like the dreaded like before lunch slot, right? We're keeping you all, gonna keep you all from your lunch if we don't go through it quickly. So I'll do my best to be quick um, through here. But I first wanna just say, this is amazing to be here and huge, huge thanks to Andrea and Amy and everyone else who puts this together because it's pretty inspiring to be in this group and see people from all, all parts of the system here. So thank you, psyched to be here. And we love local grain. You can tell that I've got a 12 and 14 year old by my love of emojis apparently. So, um, but I needed a title slide, so. Um, so I know it's hard to see some of this, but I'm just simply trying to organize, you know, why we use local grains, how we integrate the grains into our, into our beer, uh, and, and then how to educate consumers and, and sell the stuff. Um, just really a series of pictures here. So, you know, why? And I realized as I, I, was, I was looking over these slides, in, in this crowd, it's kind of silly, right? Like, you got, I don't need to tell you, everyone in this room, why. You guys all know why. But I'll walk you a little bit through our kind of mindset. Um, you know, first of all, this, again, it's hard to see, I know, those are our core values on the right for, for Allagash. And I, you know, firmly put this in our core value of caring, you know, being an environmentally and socially responsible community member. And for, for us, it's really about community. So we've been using local uh, raw materials and beer for, I mean, probably a decade and a half, probably, um, but really small in the early years. And what really happened in the last um, five to six years especially was really the more that I myself and other, other brewery members got to know farmers and got to interact with farmers and millers, just kind of realized the amazing opportunity that there was to grow uh, our use of grains and to hopefully help them build their businesses. So it's really all about for, you know, really community connection and quality, I guess, are the three ways I have it organized here. So, uh, you know, community building those relationships. Um, connection uh, in is, is, it's probably one of my favorite things I get to do at the brewery is interact with farmers and interact with our suppliers. Um, and whether that's, you know, out in the field, this is a picture, it's hard to see of us at our mills at Harvest, one of our partners, just, you know, love connecting with them and, and seeing the stuff in the field. Uh, and then sometimes, again, hard picture to see on the right, but that's, that's drinking beer with the Buck family around a campfire after spending the day out in the field with them. So those kind of connections are also a lot of fun. Um, but just being able to have that connection with those folks and, the, and, and, um, and then quality. You know, I, I think we often get asked the question, using local grain, you're getting uh, supplied by these local small uh, outfits, is the quality just as good? And, and, I, and I typically, my argument is it's better. You know, it's, you know the, the type of connection that the farmers have with their fields and, they, and they know what they know about their product, um, the care that goes into it. And same goes on, on, on the malting side here at Maine Malt House, picture on the right set at Maine Grains. Just, you just tour their facilities and get a sense of the people. The quality is absolutely there. Um, and there's also that, the connection you can have on the small scale uh, with these folks and they can work with you and, and with our maltsters especially we can go back and forth with them on what our what our wants are what our needs are for specification in a grain um, and we, sure we can also do that from a larger supplier but it is wonderful to be able to have that local connection with them and have them work around kind of what our needs are um, I put this up here but it's not really so much a why we just recently became B Corp certified in 2000 uh, just last year 2019. Um, so it's not really a why so much because this came much after our local use, but uh, I will say as we went through this process of getting B Corp certified and going through the huge questionnaire and all that, we did get uh, a lot of points in their scoring system for our connection with local sourcing. So just thought that was worth, worth mentioning. Um, and then in terms of how to integrate it, and Bart, Bart, Bart Watson just kind of 
stole my thunder slightly, uh, but there's a couple different ways we do it. And first of all, I just wanted to throw out there that we started this initiative in 2017 um, to use a million pounds of locally grown and processed grain per year by 2021. And um, we, did the, we did it in a, in a tiered approach uh, for a number of reasons. Um, one, really selfishly for our own sake, for us to, at the time in 2017, I think we were using about 80,000 pounds in a given year. Um, and we, we wanted to give ourselves the opportunity to work it into our existing beer lineup, create new beers around it and so on, um, but also hopefully allow this open line of communication with our farmer and uh, Malter and Miller partners in terms of what how we want to grow our business with them and you know if they need to grow their business accordingly or, or to give that kind of open line of communication there and I will say we also talked at one point when we started this about doing a percent like oh let's use a percent of our of our uh, of our grain in a given year locally um, but what we realized was one um, you know the people growing the grain and malting the grain don't care about percent they care about pounds they want to know how much is going to be used and two, it what didn't feel as much of a commitment. So, so if Allagash doesn't grow, then our growth of grains doesn't grow. And so we wanted to commit ourselves to saying we're going to use a million pounds per year, kind of no matter what. Uh, and, and that's what we've committed to do so. And um, you know, I'll skip through, I'll skip back to these, but this is kind of where it sits now. So um, you know, 17, a little over 100, and then you know uh, we're aiming for 850,000 uh, pounds in this year, um, and then next year will be the um, 1 million pounds from there. So in terms of how we do it, um, you know Bart showed a picture of our 16 counties bottle in his presentation. This is our can version, which we just switched to. Um, everybody knows everybody wants cans these days, so we finally made the switch. We're a little late to it, but we are uh, canning a bunch of beer now as well. Um, so 16 counties, and then on the right is Cross Path, which is a beer that will just come out very shortly. Both of these are 100% um, local um, grain in both cases. And in the case of Cross Path, it's 100% organic local ingredients all across the board, including the hops as well. Um, so th that's one way to do it, right? Like just basically build a beer around um, the ingredients. So. You know, brewers often do, most often actually, kind of do the opposite. You start with an idea for a beer, a style, an inspiration of some kind, and then you go back to the, what ingredients do I need to get to make said beer? In a lot of ways with these, we almost do it the other way. Like, these are the grains we want to use. This is the, the farmers or the areas we want to support. Let's build a beer around those ingredients. So that's kind of how these are created. And that's a wonderful way. To incorporate the grains, it's also a great way to tell the story of the grains, to talk about it. Um, but uh, that's not all we can do. So that's just a picture of four beers, other beers, Allagash White, our flagship, and River Trip another year round, and then two other specialty beers. In these cases, we are incorporating small percentages of local grain into core beers. So Allagash White we've made for 25 years. To make an immediate switch to local sourcing 100% is a difficult thing to do, frankly, both from a cost perspective and from a just flavor profile. But if we want to use a lot of grains, we want to get to that million pounds, we, we have to do that as well. So all of these beers have some percentage of a local grain um, incorporated into the beer on the regular. And so that lets us have a predictable use of the grain in a given year because these are pretty predictable in terms of how much we use. Um, it. One other thing I'll say, because I know there's a lot of bakers in the room. One thing that's interesting about beer as you talk uh, to bakers and, and millers and growers together, we are, uh, fortunately, we're, brew, we as brewers are actually pretty inefficient, right, in our use of grain. <laughs> we need a lot. We need a lot of grain to make beer. So uh, luckily, you know, when we're done with it, it still has a good purpose. We can feed it out to livestock. But uh, it just, it's an easier, it would be probably a lot harder, I'm guessing, for a baker to use a million pounds of grain in a year, but as a brewer, again, we're not necessarily the most efficient users of grain, so uh, that's a good thing, right? Uh, and that just shows uh, our mix in 2019. Um, actually, at this point, we're about, uh, in 2019, we're about an even split uh, of 40% each of um, two row, and uh, raw wheat, both red and white, and then 20% uh, oats. And that'll continue to evolve uh, in 2020. 
Um, and then in terms of how to build it in, I, this is just super rough math, and I know you probably can't see this, but I just did literally like back of the envelope calculations on this, and this really only uh, incorporates in kind of cost of goods, not necessarily the expenses of marketing and sales, et cetera. So think tap room here. But basically, roughly, easily less than 40 cents a four pack, 20 cents for a 16 ounce pour, if you're thinking about selling that same beer, switch to 100% local ingredients. That's again, rough cost. And I only bring that up as a point, like as a brewer, especially in a tap room model, you know, anyone who says, I don't want to use local grains because it's too expensive, just build it in because especially in a tap room where you got customers coming in, there aren't, most customers aren't going to even ask the difference between, you know, a, you know, 25 cents more for a 16 ounce pour of beer. It's not going to phase people. So it's an easy thing to incorporate, especially in that tap room small model. Um, let's see what else. And then this this is a big thing to just talk about is in terms of how to educate consumers and 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 uh, sell the beer. So. Beer is made from water, hops, and yeast, right? And, and grain, right? And I bring that up, and this is almost like the biggest thing I think is worth talking about here because one of the big battles I see, and I'm sure other brewers can agree with this, it's amazing how often you talk to a craft consumer, even, even what we'd call a beer geek, and they have really almost no sense of the use of grains in beer. Like they may know that grains are used, but they know it's barley, not necessarily. You know, they know it's wheat's in there, not necessarily. Uh, and again, Bart referenced earlier citra and hops and so on. Hops has gone on this crazy thing. And, you know, wouldn't it be wonderful if someday people are seeking out beers made with Tinka? I mean, that would be great, right? Before we even get there, I think just getting more consumers to understand that barley and wheat and oats are in beer is, is as important as anything else. And then the next step, of course, is why local is an important part of that role. So. I just think it's worth noting that it continues to amaze me how often I'll meet a craft consumer who doesn't necessarily make that connection. They know all about the hops, but they don't necessarily know about grain. Uh, and then, can't see this very well, but I just want to talk about some of our partnerships. Main Grain Alliance has already been referenced here, so Main Grain Alliance is amazing. Um, huge shout out to them. And the Needing Conference, just a pitch to that. I'm sure many of you have been to it, considering the crowd that's here, but if you haven't, you should. It's an incredibly inspiring conference in July. I don't know if the date's set. 23rd. 23rd of July, so up in Skowhegan, Maine. Awesome conference. And we've done a bunch of work with these folks. Currently doing a, um, uh, a promotional campaign to get uh, donate money from every um, pint we sell of 16 counties, and that's just, again, to raise awareness around it. Digital stuff. I'm not the social media guy by any means, but I know we do a lot of work with it uh, and we have a lot of followers and so on. Um, and then this is just a handful of posts. Um, the thing that, that, you know, we got Jake Buck over here and Sarah from Rural Mills and uh, Joel from Blue Ox and then 16 counties over here. The thing that's cool about these posts is that the, the farmers, the millers, the maltsters become the rock stars, rightfully so, which is kind of fun. And getting consumers to, to think that way is great. Um, just a few more posters we've used. Um, and then just, I think that's my last slide of, again, it all comes down to promoting these rock star farmers, maltsters and millers, and getting people to think about it that way, and, and so on. So um, hopefully I didn't go too far over time, didn't babble too much. But that's all I have. The only other thing I will say real quickly is um, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be on the American Malting Barley Association board. As, as well as the Brewers Association board and head up the tech committee for the Brewers Association. And I know that may come off a little bit like a humble brag, but I only bring it up in that those organizations are super engaged in what you guys all do and have resources, whether that's you know connections, lobbying connections in Washington for the AMBA or resources that the Brewers Association has to devote to stuff. So if you have any concerns, thoughts, please like come find me and I can funnel that stuff up to those organizations pretty easily. That's all I got.